go Where the fire serve cold But the wolves and the hawks never shiver in the snow The bulls keep it running, the Sox run the south The Cubs run the north, but the Bears run the house Two Chicago sports fans got their ears to the street Any team make a move and they never skip a beat And in this house, this is where we be Welcome to the show with E-Rock and Big Z Welcome, 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 welcome to Chicago, coming coming to you live from the Two Chicago Sports Fan Cave. This is the TCSF Podcast Bears Post Game with E Rock and Big Z. Yeah, <laughs> we are brought to you by Six Hundred Six Media, Two Chicago Sports Fans, ACSI, Grit Clothing Company, and don't forget to go to gritclothingco.com and get your official TCSF T shirts. Now, search for keyword Chew Chicago and use our promo code ChewFan15 for 15% off your entire order. That's ChewFan15. Get your official TCSF sh- uh, shirts now. As always, <laughs> as always, I'm here. I'm Big Z and I'm here with my boy E Rock. What up, E? What's good, Z? What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome in. If you are a first timer or a long timer, please remember to hit that subscribe button, that notify button, and go ahead and give us a review on your listening app of choice. And don't forget, you can support the show with a monthly subscription at anchor.fm slash true Chicago sports fans. Head on over there and you can be a subscriber for as low as 99 cents a month. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here live on Facebook after another kind of exciting Bears game. Very interesting Bears game. Interesting uh, but before story. we get too deep into that, let me tell you a little bit about a great opportunity with our friends over at ACSI. With over 50 expert technicians in the Chicagoland area, ACSI offers a one-stop shop for telecom wiring. Whether residential cable installation, fiber to the home, or commercial structured cable wiring, ACSI is a proud partner of Comcast and RCN. Let me tell you guys the most impressive thing about ACSI. During these hard times, the ACSI crew did their thing during the COVID-19 pandemic, and ACSI was awarded HACIA's 2020 Contractor of the Year Award. The best part is that ACSI is growing bigger and better than ever. ACSI is now growing or now hiring for field sales technicians and project managers. Check out ACSI.tech. That's A-C-S-I. Dot tech and click on careers to apply today. Go get you a job. <laughs> All right, let's get into it right now. Let's talk some Bears football. Z, two classic teams, the Browns going with the throwbacks. Justin Fields in his NFL starting debut, taking on Baker Mayfield and the Cleveland Browns in Cleveland. The mistake by the lake. Yes, sir. And I got to say, at least to start the game, the defense was absolutely the story of the game. Yeah, the defense uh, held up their, their end of the bargain in the beginning of the game. Um, they were overextended in the second half and exposed. Yeah. I mean, when you're out there, almost the whole game, that's going to happen. Um, I think Justin Fields had no time with an O line that looked like Swiss cheese, and I mean to their credit, they're playing one of the great defense. They have Clowney, they have uh, Garrett, they have a bunch of uh, playmakers on defense now. So that defense is not something uh, that uh, you want to be facing week in and week out. Uh, no. that, n- Nagy's not making the right calls. So the thing is, is that you know, the, I think the encouraging thing about this game is that we saw both Quinn and Mac with fourth down sacks on Baker Mayfield to force turnovers on downs to start the game. Um, you know, Fields taking snaps under center. They 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 turned their first possession into a forty yard, uh, forty seven yard field goal. And like you said, Jadavian Clowney, I had no idea he was even on the Browns. I had no idea that he signed anywhere. Um, mm-hmm. But they that is a good spot for him. Um, they kind of remind me of Tampa Bay, the land of misfit toys. So you got a lot of players. <laughs> <laughs> on that team that were cast offs from other teams you got kareem hunt you got odell beckham um you got jarvis landry who is on the uh, il this week but you also had odell beckham come back for his first game since last season when he's tore when he tore his acl right um and he looked okay they were trying to force the ball into him a little bit early and when you saw the graphics with um Baker Mayfield to um, Odell Beckham, you saw that he wasn't quite always on the same page with Baker. Um, you know, he kind of missed a couple of uh, uh, shots downfield. Um, and, and, and it was kind of surprising. You know, the, the Browns did go for it on fourth down very early lot. in the game a couple times, and that's where the Bears got those two sacks to start. Yeah, that that's where the defense did show up. I mean, 
there was times where we had the the overload, or I want to call it, with a, a Mac and, and Quinn on one side, and that just opens up the other side for for everyone else. So the the issue is that you can't do that all game and expect the uh, the defense to be out there all game and then come up with a win. That's just not going to happen. The offense didn't do their part, and that that just falls on Nagy because his play calling was not good at all. You know, the thing is, is that you look at the time of possession and the Bears only had the balls, ball for uh, 20 minutes and 26 seconds versus 39, 34 for the Browns. I mean, this, this, it, it, the first downs, the first downs, the Browns had 27 first downs compared Jeez, to the Bears seven. seven. Um, I mean, you know, uh, like I said, the, the Browns went for it uh, three times on fourth down. They were one for three. The Bears did go for it once. Um, and, and the Browns had a total of 78 plays on offense. Uh, they allowed five sacks, but we, the Chicago Bears, allowed nine sacks. That means the brand new toy, Justin Fields, was sacked nine times. That's unacceptable. Okay. That's your franchise quarterback, and you let him get, you know, he can't get hurt like that. I mean, it, it was kind of incredible. You saw him trying to move around, and, and I want to say going into either the first half or, or, or at the end of the first half or then the first quarter, he had one throw, one throw for like 11 yards. So, I mean, like, it's kind of incredible to see what Justin uh, Fields was able to do. Six uh, six completions on 20 attempts only, okay? This, you, they had no, no offensive game plan whatsoever. I feel like they just threw uh, spaghetti at a wall to see what would stick because this was an abysmal performance. Allen Robinson, only two receptions. Um, Cole Komet with one, Mooney with one, and Montgomery with one. And that is it, is it? ladies and gentlemen. This was a fail, failure on offense on every front. The the offensive line was absolutely terrible. The, the rushing game was, I mean, we saw David Montgomery when he found the hole and when he was getting in there. He actually played pretty well, and he he's done what he we've seen him do up to this point in the season, finding the hole and getting downfield. But this was an embarrassment. Right. The, David Montgomery is going to do his job no matter what, in day in and day out. Ten, ten carries is just horrible. And 34 yards, you can't, I mean, I don't blame the 34 yards on him, but 10 carries. And then some of those play calls, like, he was, it was like, obviously they're going to run. Like, you can tell that they were not prepared to uh, have a game plan to mix it up. No. And you can't have the kid out there just holding the ball for five, six seconds. He's going to get hit. And uh, I just think the play calling was just bad. There was no, I didn't see that much play action. I didn't see, uh, you know, a sweep out to the outside for Montgomery to, to push through. Like there was a lot of creative plays on the offensive side for Cleveland. And I was like, why don't we do that? You know, the thing is, is that a lot of people w w were saying, you know, we, that field should have been the starter from the beginning. And there's two problems with that. Number one, obviously I think what we can see by today is that he's not ready, but what that means is that the bears, once they drafted Justin Fields, they didn't put enough resources into him and spent way too much resources on Andy Dalton when they should have been prepping up this kid and getting him ready to go. And that's an indictment on Matt Nagy and, and, and the entire offensive scheme. Now, I, I said before that it's a possibility that they were afraid of what was going to happen to Justin Fields, considering the fact that their old line is this absolutely Swiss cheese. Mm -hmm. they, they had to bring in Peters because they let go uh, of uh, Charles Leno, who's now with Washington. And the kid that they drafted to play uh, um, yeah. to, to play on the line there, uh, Tevin Jenkins, is hurt. And he's been hurt the entire season. So, you know, it makes me wonder, were you just putting uh, Dalton out there as a sacrificial lamb to see what he was going to do, to see when he was going to get hurt? And then now that it's Fields time, I mean, you know, we're not. So let's be fair. This is not your daddy's Browns team. OK, this is a team full of playmakers, very good players. Odell Beckham coming back was a huge boost for them, but they have a lot of good players on this team. And we saw Kareem Hunt with his running ability and his catching ability. Um, really take it to the Bears. Right. You had Nick Chubb, 22 for 84, Kareem Hunt, 10 for 81. Baker Mayfield, 4 for 31, and Odell Beckham, 1 for 10. I mean, you had just about everybody running on the Bears. Like, you know, they stole a purse. It was disgusting. Uh, you had Baker Mayfield, with 19 for 31, for 246, and a touchdown. Yeah. I mean, he had the time to throw it. I mean, yes, he did get sacked quite a bit, but compared to not the Bears, I mean, the, the nine sacks on, on Justin Fields is just unacceptable. Uh, Beckham, Kareem Hunt. Uh, both had like 77 and 74 yards respectively. Uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones had two great catches. This kid yeah. had two great catches. That's all he had, but they were, it was 39 yards. And then Hooper in the, with a touchdown right in the middle. Yeah. You that, know, I mean, the thing is, is that we talked about not just the offensive line, but also 
um, the offense in general. I mean, it, it just didn't seem like anyone was there today. I, you know, we look at where A. Rob was and where Mooney was, and there just wasn't really completions. It felt like they didn't get open either. And you know, we, we can call this the Miles Garrett game because he had six uh, uh, and uh, six tackles and one assist, four and a half sacks for this yep. man. And also, you're looking at Javian Clowney with two sacks, and Ronnie Harrison, whoever that guy is, is a sack. So, I mean, if you look down the list of the defensive players for the Browns. Like every player has at least a half a sack. Yeah, you know it's insane. It is insane. This is this is a terrible. You know, a lot of people were saying maybe Matt Nagy is afraid to play Justin Fields because he doesn't know how to uh, coach Justin Fields. And to me, I, I mean, I would pull. I'd be pulling back that 2018 game plan when he had uh, uh, Trubisky running all over the field, rolling out, get trying to find a way to get open. But I really honestly think that this offensive line is just so bad that they there's just no time for him. When you play in the NFL, when you move from from high school to college, the game gets faster. When you go from college to NFL, the game just gets extremely fast. And one of the things that we talked about last week was that he did say, hey, you know, in that preseason game, it everything felt a lot slower, a lot slower. Right. Well, now that you're in a real game, preseason ain't the same, bro. Your preseason, when you're playing against the second and third stringers, is not the same. Now you're playing against the big boys, and the big boys took it to you. The big boys did take it to them. But again, it's all on a play calling and the lack of adjustments from the first half to the second half. The, you were in it in the whole first half. The second half, you were like, oh, we're just going to keep doing the same thing. And guess what? That's not going to work, man. They made the adjustments, and they they had a, a Baker rolling out and throwing deep and stretching the field, and then you, you put in a running game. And then they just bruised us all the way up and down the field. I mean, that's just no, the, that's what happens. The disappointing thing is that I feel like the defense definitely did enough for us to be able to win that game. Definitely. Yeah, you didn't have like an interception like we saw with uh, Roquan last week, but we did see him get to the ball with whatever's going on with his elbow because that thing is definitely like wrapped up like J.J. Watt. Okay, And then Mac um, uh, went down with a foot injury. Mac went down with a foot injury. I think he was back on the sidelines, but I don't I don't remember if he came back in the game or not. But, uh, you know, it's, it's just disappointing to see. Now, like I said, I, I called this a 28 to 17 loss for the Bears. And the Bears were lucky to even get two field goals because, yes, they got that that opening drive uh, long field goal, 47 yards by Cairo Santos. But they only got a second field goal because there was a terrible, bad pass interference penalty that was called on the Browns. That absolutely was not uh, P.I. That was a nice uh, uh, interception by the Browns. And, you know, the Bears were gifted a field goal and they got all the way down there on that on that penalty and they couldn't score a touchdown. So. I mean, I don't know what we're going to see next week when they face the Lions because the Lions right now are 0-3 and they're hungry for a win and they know. I promise you that Dan Campbell and uh, and and the rest of the team there, they're licking their chops looking at a kid like Justin Fields knowing for a fact that they've been watching. They, they're they familiar enough with Matt Nagy up there to know that he can't call the game. No, he can't. He doesn't make adjustments. So he, w- what's the good? Do you have any, any good things that came out of this game? Look, I mean, look, the good has to be the defense, you know, seeing Khalil Mack get to the quarterback, seeing Robert Quinn get to the quarterback. I mean, I think overall the defense actually played pretty well, and I, and that would have been their saving grace to win this game. But, you know, just because the team was just so bad on offense, they just did not have enough to be able to overcome what, what happened on uh, on the line. Yeah, I mean, there's no way that uh, the, the defense is going to be able to put up again, hold up, hold that wall up for, for you know, more than three quarters of, of them playing and the offense is just not doing their job it's just right. and that's where that's the that's got to be the, the bad and the ugly is that so, the, well, is the offense so I, i'll give you i'll give you two different things because the bad to me is justin fields because i feel like i feel like we didn't think justin fields and matt Nagy together okay because the whole thing when we talk about justin fields was that oh he's at get that's this great escapability this and that we barely saw him throw it downfield and that's something that you know he might have took a chance Here's the thing. If you you see a lot of these quarterbacks and they're going to develop over time, they're going to take the game into their own hands. You take, mm-hmm. for example, Aaron Rodgers. You see him take the game into his own hands. He sees what's happening on the field. He gets up there and, and, and makes the adjustment. And he makes the play, right? Well, we didn't see the receivers come up and try to help out Justin Fields. If we want to talk about the ugly, the ugly is the O-line because that was absolutely disgusting, brutal, horrible. I, I mean, like, they should all get fired in the off day. Me and you will go, go out there and do a better job. Yeah, I mean, these, these old O-linemen go, should go to Spain and, uh, you know, be bullfighters because they were just like, ole, come right in. <laughs> Literally, you're just letting – you you seen the Fetty and, and, and the rest of these guys just like, ooh, here's a little push, and then the defensive player just goes right past them. 
right into Justin Fields' face. You, well, yes. we saw we also saw Jason Peters, you know, the 157 year old Jason Peters, <laughs> sit there and try to do a, you know a, a chop block or whatever the hell he was doing over there when oh, it was man. definitely not the time for that for that uh, type of play. Look, um, it, it's just it's disappointing to see what you know what transpired during this game. I feel like they were just completely and totally overmatched, underprepared. Um, you know, we did, like I said, the, the the bright spot on this team has to be the defense. Mario Edwards Jr. had a sack. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He held the Bear, the Browns into check early in the game, and the Bears just had no response. They just could not find it. I don't know what they did during halftime. There was no type of adjustment to come back from what was – it was just bad. I mean, I and, and I feel like, you know, as much crap as people and, and Bears fans like to give Andy Dalton, he would have done a much better job out there today. He might have yeah. got beat up too because he's not nearly as mobile. But you just saw Justin Fields out there like a deer to headlights, had no idea what to do with the ball. Yeah, uh, Justin would go through his first, maybe his second uh, uh, read, and then just, whoa, 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 oh, got to run, got to run, got to run. And right, and, and running into a brick wall because no one's open. He is, It just – it was bad all the way around. Um, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what kind of expectations that people had for Justin Fields, but I hope this wasn't it. I mean, they they scored, uh, the Bears scored a field goal in the first and the third, and that was absolutely it. I mean, guys, 68 yards in your debut. 68 yards. And this is the guy where everyone says he has the potential to be the number one overall pick. And what for whatever reason he slid down and we were able to snag him at eleven. But I mean, I I still feel good about the kid. I feel good about his abilities. I'm starting to worry because I'm not a big worrier as far as um, Matt Nagy is concerned. I have not been that concerned with him. He makes boneheaded moves. Everyone does that. He's he's still pretty early in his coaching career as far as being a head coach. Right. And I'm the, starting to get worried. Yeah, well, the thing is that he might have to coach somewhere else. That that's the thing. You're gonna need a veteran presence, uh, presence in the locker room. You don't need someone that everyone loves and have a great culture and kumbaya and team building. You, need, you, you can't need do all that. that. You, you need both things because they, because you, you I, leave I, that I, to like, you leave that to the coaches. You you leave that to the, the line coaches and this is and that. That's what happens. Everyone loves their position coach. They love them because they spend more one on one time and they give them that you know pat on the back and the you know here that a boy. The head coach should be an a hole. He should be an a -hole. I, You know, I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I nece necessarily agree with that because I almost I almost feel like it should be the opposite way around. I feel like the head coach should be like, "Hey, I got your back. Let's go do it." And and the the he should be uh, an a hole to the to the uh, position coaches where the hey get the job done or you're gone. Those are the hey hey coach is gonna cut you. Hey, you know what I mean? Like he should be just the the papa. You know what I mean? Yeah, the, but he doesn't he doesn't delegate. He the doesn't delegate well. Make your launch and, and make sure that you're good to go and make sure you're safe. And the head coach is like, all right, we're going to go out there and have some fun. But if you screw up, you're gone. You know what I mean? That's the end of the line. That's to me how it should be. Yeah, it goes both ways. Nagy sucks at play calling, period, guys. No questions, man. Terrible. Let me put that up there. That's a great but one. Right. Right. Hey, hey look, you're, well, you're, you you're completely correct with that because the thing is, is that we have not seen his play calling get better. No. I, I'm very surprised. I'm wondering who was actually calling those plays in 2018. Yeah. You know, because we saw we saw Mitch roll out. Mm -hmm. We saw, and there was a couple of like you know we, Matt Nagy's favorite play is that stupid end around that Cordell Patterson move. That it, it just it is absolutely frustrating. And you know, I'm wondering what's going to happen at the end of this season because I will tell you this: Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace both act like they are completely and totally safe. So if this is some experiment, and that's a part of the reason why I think Matt Nagy was holding on to Justin Fields to start uh, uh, in the beginning of the season versus now, because what are we doing? Where Are we waiting for Aaron Rodgers to leave Green Bay so we can take advantage? <laughs> We're waiting for Aaron Rodgers to leave the end of the, uh, the, yeah, uh, the, you know the round. I mean? like, is that what you're, because we know for a fact, if they don't sit there and spend this offseason next year, Completely and totally, only focusing on the line. But uh, they they can't spend. They're oh. they're in they're in cap uh, hell. They're in cap hell with everything that they have with the Jimmy Graham and 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 the uh, Goldman and all these guys with extreme extreme contracts. They don't have money to spend this year or next year. Well, Eddie Goldman is definitely you know like I said, I, I always I always lean towards guys named Eddie anyway. But I mean like this guy right here, we don't know what's going on with him. It's, uh, Last year he set out because of COVID, and and I can co totally respect that. Mm -hmm. That's your choice. But this year he's been completely absent. We do not know what his injury is. We don't know why he's not playing, and uh, it's frustrating because he was supposed to be a key. 
cog in that line and we're looking at other people coming up and stepping up and what it seems to me is that they do not need him yeah. now we can talk about the secondary because the secondary is uh when we we talk about uh fuller that left and and because they got rid of him should they have gotten rid of jimmy graham should you know what i mean we got uh hicks over here looking for a contract i want to remain a bear in my whole career so on and so forth it yeah. is going to be very interesting to see what they do to address that o-line because i'll tell you what when they had daniels go down last year you had mustafer come in and solidify the line you had alex bars come in and solidify the line and we look at what they were doing towards the end of the season they actually look pretty good so how do you regress from the end of the season to a start a brand new season <laughs> there's no answer for that because if we don't have an answer they definitely don't have an answer and again i, I really think Nagy needs to keep up the like you said delegate and say, hey, you're going to be held accountable for the offense now because I'm giving it to you because apparently I don't know what I'm doing. And yeah. uh, um, I'm going to apply at McDonald's and wear my uh, visor yeah. and get yeah. my college uh, uh, a tuition paid. That's the best recruiting job he's done all year, actually knowing. You know, I mean, I feel like that's what he's doing is preparing these players for their next career and, and <laughs> being management at McDonald's. <laughs> you can also be a manager because, you know, I, look, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if it's too many big banks. I don't know what the hell's going on with him. One interesting topic that we brought up last week, uh, not on the show, but on the page, and it went nuts. Uh, Lovey Smith, back in the NFL, he is actually currently the defensive coordinator for the uh, Houston Texans. Right. And just, you know, our, our, our buddy Sturge up there put it up there as a stirring the pot. Do you think the Bears should bring back Lovey Smith as the head coach? Now, we got a lot, a lot, a lot of reactions going back and forth each way. Tell me, what do you think? Would you welcome Lovey Smith back as a head coach of the Chicago Bears? I mean, if you want to be nostalgic, yeah. But, no, his defense doesn't work anymore. You can't have a, a cover two defense the entire game anymore. Um, defense, uh, offenses have smartened up to that. And then he's never had a consistent uh, offensive coordinator. Every year it was changing. It was uh, uh, March, and then it was... Uh, yeah, well, they, they, it was a revolving door up there. It was a revolving door, and that's why Jay couldn't do anything because every time he had to install a whole new offense and learn all that so and they had players you know they had b marsh and they had uh, um, some some i mean if we're being fair we know that jay color did not have that many playmakers over his career don't forget there was a one season where they tried to convince him and us that devin hester was not just a wide receiver but a number one wide receiver in the game and he can't barely tie his shoes you know what i mean like he was good at running but that's about it you know yeah so that's a wrong hey there. He's going to be in the Hall of Fame because that's another topic that was brought up this week. But, you know, Devin Hester was not a receiver. Uh, you had uh, Johnny Knox out there with his, you know, crushed back. And uh, they did have the season where you had B. Marsh, you had Matt Forte, you had, um, you know, the, the black unicorn, uh, Martellus <laughs> Bennett out there. You know, so you did have some playmakers. It was just, you know, it just kind of didn't, it fell apart when his knee got busted up in that championship game against the, uh, against the Packers. So I don't think that I would like, Lovey uh, Lovey Fields, uh, Lovey Smith back <laughs> on the Bears as a head coach. Um, you know, a lot of people saying, "Well, I'll take him as a defensive coordinator." I don't think Sean Desai is doing a bad job at no, all. That he's first not doing game a bad job. Bad. But the last two games, the defense have showed out and balled out. And like I said, that's the only chance they had to win this game. I think what you're going to get is you're going to get guys like Khalil Mack and the rest of the, all these all these big names you got there. Yeah, they like showing out. Yeah, it's Chicago Bears tradition to have a great solid defense. But these guys are not getting any younger. And what's going to happen is they're going to age out by the time Justin Fields is truly ready to play. And right. that is that is why you get someone like Andy Dalton to fill that gap, to bridge that gap. But the problem is, is that you don't have enough on offense to get you to where you need to go, where you don't waste this defense. So what's going to happen is they're going to waste the defense waiting, to, you know, and, and, and why you have the kid in, in place with no offensive line. Right. So then, when right. that when that money's off the books, then they'll invest in an offensive line and they'll have no defense. So it's, it's really, they they have to figure out a balance for this team. You know, they really have to figure out a balance because it's just it is it is frustrating. They need to pack up, uh, pack up all their crap, go over to Arlington Heights, and uh, you you ever move and you look at all the stuff that you packed up, all the stuff that you like. <laughs> and like your like record it. collection and your favorite bobbleheads and they're all wrapped up nice in your beer glasses and they're set aside in that beautiful box and it's taped all nice and it's stacked up in the corner and you think oh man i did such a good job packing and you look around you're like who whose crap is all this i don't want this that's what the bears need to do they need to pack up the stuff that's good the stuff that they like the pretty stuff put it away in a nice box and leave the rest behind that yeah. is what needs to happen they need to get a new stadium and they need to move 
on from a lot of this crap. It's Thanks. it's getting to the point, and I haven't been a Matt Nagy hater, but I'm getting to that point, man. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the comments on the page uh, from today's post, it, it's a, a lot of it's fire Nagy, fire Nagy. So, um, yeah, does the clock start ticking? Is that seat getting hotter now? That's that's the question because, it, like I said, they they have played or they have coached and signed players like they do not have a care in the world. That's that they have no qualms about knowing that they're going to be here next year. So it'll be interesting to see what happens at the end of this season. Uh, fire him by seven a.m. Hey, uh, Matt Nagy <laughs> uh, won't have your breakfast sandwich ready by then, sir. <laughs> so uh, let's look ahead a little bit. Uh, like I said uh, last week, the Bears have this weird schedule where there's no two uh, consecutive home or road games. So they do come back home and they will host the Detroit Lions. The Lions are currently three are oh and three. They lost today uh, 19 to 17 against the Baltimore Ravens at home in Detroit. So uh, Wait, what did do you 19 think? to 17. 19 to 17 and they were actually down uh they were down pretty good um lions put up 10 in the uh in the final quarter to kind of pull back a little bit they do they were held scoreless to start the game in the first half and the, the ravens were up 10 nothing and then slowly kind of slowed down uh lions were able to get a touchdown in the third and the fourth and then so uh, like I, they would out, they, can out, they can outscore us is what you're saying they can outscore us because don't forget, you know, this is not a uh, this is not a Matt Stafford team. We're going to no. actually see both the recent um, uh, Lions quarterbacks in the in in to start the first first four games of the season. So it'll be interesting. We knew that Matt Stafford had the Bears number because we watched him oh, yeah. Kyrus over the years, but now we move over to a Detroit Lions team. Uh, look. Um, what do you think is going to happen in this game? Who, who do you favor in this game? I, it's just like it's a toss up at this point because you have Detroit who sucks. I mean, they're 0 3, right? That's what you say. Uh -huh. And the Bears right now, you know, their offense sucks because their play calling is horrible and their game planning is horrible. You, Matt and I, you can't go to the podium this week and say, hey, yeah, we asked Justin what kind of plays he likes and uh, we open all the playbook and we let him play uh, pick all the plays that he likes and that he can really uh, flourish in and then you don't install that into the game yeah the, the kid had no chance at all so no. I mean the, the I mean let's put it this way everyone is a professional they're way better than 99% of the people out on the street uh, uh, that are talking smack back and forth the Detroit Lions are not going to lay down and say, go ahead, Bears, take another winner. We're going to go and four. That's not going to happen. It's going to be a close game. Yeah, it, it, it's not. And, uh, you know, Jared Goff went to the Super Bowl a couple of years ago with the Rams. So, mm -hmm. you know, today he was 22 for 30 with 270, uh, 17 yards, no touchdowns. Your two touchdowns by the Lions were from the running backs, DeAndre Swift, who they were drafted a couple of years ago, and Jamal Williams, who actually came over from the Packers. And, uh, you know, they both uh, looked pretty good. You had Swift with 14 carries for 47 yards and Williams with 12 carries for 42 yards. And Jared Goff was one little scramble there for four yards. So, I mean, like mm -hmm. they did put the put the ball in the hands of the, the running backs. They, they got their uh, almost 100 yards rushing and two touchdowns there. So, I mean, I think that the Bears actually did a very good job as far as stopping the run. Um, they, they bottled up, you know, Kareem Hunt was out there a lot more than Chubb, was, which was surprising to me and very upsetting to me because I have Chubb on like four fantasy football teams. <laughs> and I thought for sure he was going to be able to get some uh, get some some yardage today, but he didn't. And uh, Kareem Hunt looked very good. Um, you know, we look at the receivers for the Detroit Lions. Um, you had Khalif Raymond with six receptions for 68 yards. DeAndre Swift, the running back, with seven receptions. So, I mean, Swift is going to be the main factor they're going to have to look out for next week because he can catch the ball and he can run the ball, obviously. Yeah, the ball was spread around to eight different receivers. So, um, yeah, the defense is going to have a lot of work to, to, to uh, do this week. Uh, and, again, it's a big deal is, is to get to the quarterback and um, – the points are how you win games, and the offense isn't doing that for us. Peters, Peters is just old. He's not. I mean, he's not a bust because he's been in the league for like 157 years, so he's not a bust. Um, Latory Phillips, but you know the thing is, is that he's just old, man. Like I'm 40, 
I ain't going out there. He's 39. So it ain't like he's, you know, this young buck, this spring chicken, and he's right. a Hall of Fame player. And, you know, he played for, for what, 12 years in Philly and then several years before that. So this is a very, very good offensive lineman in his career. He's just old. He was an emergency contingent plan because they let go of Leno too early. They should have held on. If Even with drafting Tevin Jenkins, they should have held on to Leno. And they I think they would have been in a much better position. So, and you're absolutely right. What, what have you done for me lately? Exactly. And not he hasn't well he's never done anything for the bears as far as peters is concerned um but yeah i mean uh, this is going to be a low scoring game for the uh the lions and the bears i mean we're, we might be talking about like a 14 to 10 game or something like that and i just i honestly unfortunately i really don't have much faith in the bears right now so i'm calling it a 14 10 win for the detroit lions uh 10 9 10 9. 10 9. 10 9. Baseball score. Old City, baby. Yeah. 10 9. Yeah. So, um, look, it's it's frustrating to see what direction this team is going to go. I'm really, I don't want to hit the panic button on, on Justin Fields. Obviously, his first ever NFL start. I will start to panic if after a couple games, we don't really see Nagy figure out how to utilize this guy, who is very similar to, to Trubisky as far as his playmaking ability, but we saw what he wanted to do with Trubisky in that first season. And for some reason going forward, he tried to make him into this pocket Pocket passer, which you can't do. That's not his style. Nope. Not at all. I want like the, right now I want to give a shout out to everybody who jumped on with us. Uh, Victor, uh, Gusto. We got, who else came out? Eladio, Chris, as usual, Chris always uh, supports us. David, David Campbell. Yep. Yep. And then who else we got? Uh, Phillips. Yeah, go. I mean, we look, we, we always love talking to you guys and hearing from you guys, especially when we do live the show. Don't forget, you can always check out the audio version of this show every Monday morning, the True Chicago Sports Fan Podcast Bears post game show. I know that's a mouthful, but you can always check us on your favorite uh, streaming app, your listening app of choice, Spotify, Apple Music, all that good stuff. And don't forget, every Tuesday morning, the True Chicago Sports Fans Podcast. Um, and that's our regular show where we talk about all the other sports. This year, we did move over a little bit and have our, our Bears post game a little bit longer and, and separate so you guys can uh, uh, you know talk to us and we can do that live for you guys right after the shows. But like I said, check this out in audio version every Monday morning after a Sunday Bears game. And uh, yeah. It's cool. time to get out of here. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, a big thank you to our sponsors, 606 Media, True Chicago Sports Fans, um, ACSI, Grit Clothing Company, you know, uh, check us out. Like I said, every uh, every week on the show, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll see you next week. And uh, check us out on Tuesday for the regular show. Uh, until the next time, uh, take care of each other. <laughs> for the love of sports, <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> All right, guys. See you guys later. <laughs>